All right, so um, last final bit on the miniature itself, um, the possessed metal. Um, I think actually in the in the original original box art from Games Workshop, it's a bit sad because it's just painted and pure gold. And if you take a close look at the skull, it's actually quite detailed and nice with the skull that's kind of melting out of the out of the metal with a nice little texture going on. Right. So, so I mean, you you could paint it just pure gold, and it would still look r really nice yeah. on the table. Just, yeah. just definitely because with you're sitting here, you you can take that a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So, um, color wise, I think actually gold would look pretty good on that piece. But um, if we paint that just like in a normal skull color with the gold, it could be actually too close. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was quite undecided um, where I, I should go with that. But I think we will try to still keep it gold um, because it's just matching a lot better with, with the armor pieces. Sure. Will you keep it the, the same gold? Yeah. Sure. Because it might look odd if, if you say did like uh, the, the warmer gold that you've done for for uh, the Stormcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it should, it should be like in the, in the same tone. Something I, th I think it's worth mentioning as well is that because you're keeping your your paints fairly thin and thinning them down, it you it you might think that it actually takes longer because you have to do the more layers. But because you're keeping your paints quite thin, it actually dries quicker on the model, mm -hmm. um, and and you, you get that smoother surface. So so it, it's a lot more beneficial to do that. Would you say that's right? Yeah, plus you don't lose any details if you do on a thinner thinner basis. Right. Right, so um we will start with with the non metal as we would have started with, with any other uh, non metal parts, so nothing special in the beginning and also for the skull quite like in a in a, in a classic approach how we do the highlights. And uh, but then we we get that little extra uh, with glazes in the end to get like nice demonic color transitions. So now straight for highlights on the on the base color. See, I just use the side of the brush to hit the the upper edge here. With a bit of white on the tip, just here on the on these rivets and the the very edge here. Those little rivets, I mean, they're they're quite an important little feature just to make sure that you hit to 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 really make the the, the piece kind of stand out, you know. Yeah, it's true. Those just add a lot because you can you can. Um, Really have these sparkling small highlights. Right. And again, you're placing those highlights in in the spot where the light would actually fall, keeping it from the same direction. Yeah. So I just. Um, Actually, yeah, I just built up the the contrast here also to to that side. Um, I will also add highlights here, but I want that strong contrast here with the dark shadow of the the crab hand. Sure. So it's also important to actually put highlights in here to have. The arrowheads just stick out a little bit to make it look like more gritty and sharp and not not too soft in the end. And if that does happen, you could fix it with some more of the base tone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
something that was taught to me by um, Kyle from Mr. Lee's Painting Emporium. His, his saying was like, look, just, just chill, don't worry, it's only paint. Yeah. And then you can always paint over something. Yeah, I think we talked about that that off camera. Maybe we mentioned it in the in the video before, but um, yeah, I'm kind of doing a Riddler impression here. So there's a lot of questions. <laughs> if we're covering the same stuff, guys, apologies. <laughs> no, no, but I really think um, there's almost no need if you are thin enough to to strip a model at one point because um, usually you can just paint over it and over it and over it, and at one point it should right. it should look good. Sure, there've been moments on a, on a figure I've had that same thought. It's like I'm just I'm going to strip this. I'm going yeah, to yeah. get rid of this stuff, but then you, you, if you force yourself to, because ultimately, even if you did go further on it and it was terrible, you could then strip it. It's, yeah. it I think it's much better that you've put all that work in mm -hmm. to to really try and try and force yourself to get there at the end. And it was actually something that you said in your apartment. I thought this was really really good advice to to really try and make sure that you finish projects. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, if, if, if you've got something that you're just really not feeling, it, just don't don't flog yourself over it, but really try try to get to the end because you'll you'll find that you learn a lot more that way. Yeah. Plus, you're actually just you just uh, you're just open for for critique when you say the model is finished. Before that, you have always the excuse that I don't know, I will just rewrite right, yeah, I will rewrite yeah. that, and so once once you're done, you can really also like close the case, go on with the next project and improve on that. So it's a constant learning process. Um, for the skull itself, I mix some Ruxic 10 with black and white to, to get like a nice um, dark beige tone. So, so if you took like the black and the white, mix them together, you'd have a gray and then you'd have the beige. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, how could you call a color like yeah, that? What, what would you call <laughs> that? Yeah, with my Armani grayish color box. <laughs> so, um, an important thing when we think of the color that this thing here in the end should have is that we have a difference between the uh, gold elements and the bone color that is visible here. We are quite close. So I want it to be blending in more yellow here to to that side. And but the color that that color you have it still has kind of kind of flavors of the gold. Yeah. So it really ties it together. It's not it's not like totally extreme. You know, you haven't done like the the gold for the metal and then done I don't know like a like a bright bright red or something. <laughs> and you have to try and try. And I mean, the, I'm sure it would be possible. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, if, I, mean, I think we will if anyone also, out there wants to attempt that and send in a picture, I think the guys here would, would love it. Yeah, we will we'll work also, I think, with, later on with a little bit of uh, tank brown to get in more contrast. Right. So that add, will also add a bit of interest to, to the transition here. So um, right now I'm just having Japanese uniform thinned down to glaze over the skull on the sides here. So th this part here that you're doing, you, you would say this is more like uh, the traditional layering and glazing. Yeah, right. Yeah, because it's also rather small surface, and, and that's that's really where you're taking like two colors, uh, one lighter, and one darker, and then glazing with the mid tone to soften soften the line, and it makes yeah. it gives it that smooth transition. So I'm just mixing a highlight color for the for the skull. Here, just on the upper side of the nose, the highlight on the lower and also on the, on the jaw here. Are you thinking of any uh, like glowing eyes effect coming out of the skulls? Yeah, actually, that would be really, really a nice effect. Here on the upper side of the the brows. And a small round reflex here. And that reflex, it's just off center. Yeah. Right. 
Okay, and with a color that is a bit darker than the previous color, I'm just stippling here over over the border of the two colors. So, so that that's like um, doing the layering and glazing, but instead of doing the glaze to soften the transition, because you've got such a small surface, that's why you're doing the stippling. Is that right? Yeah. Plus, the stippling is actually quite nice to to work around. Um, these round highlights because you don't have to really pull the brush all the way. Sure. So a bit brighter highlight also here in the on the brows. And I'm just with the with the glaze. I'm glazing over the the highlights. It's a glaze of the very same tone, but just a lot more dilute. It's really amazing the the um, the difference that that it makes when using something like glazes. Yeah, because you can tie together also quite a huge uh, distance and contrast just by. Glazing over it one or two times. So I a little bit of black to uh, the base color to just get more contrast so here in the middle there's some weird structure that is quite nice because uh, it looks like the the metal just corroded the skull there so we will play also a little with that texture Sizing the texture that I've marked with the darker color by adding highlights. some tank brown to uh, have more contrast in the, in the whole thing. Especially here on the, on the lower side actually of the skull. Is that to, um, to also uh, start to suggest the the uh, blending of the bone and the metal mm -hmm. at the same time, yeah. the kind of demonic effect. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want for for um, like the pure pure red that we've used before because that would be just a bit too strong. It would also look just the very same like that, and I want to keep it more natural. Right, because you've got the axe far away from the red armor, whereas if you had that too close with the the skull, because it's like right next to the red armor, it yeah. might look a bit odd. Yeah. Sure. And again, because you've been using the tank brown and the dark sea blue, it, it helps tie everything together, right? Mm -hmm. It's already quite quite interesting, I think, but. Um, to get some of that highlight back here on the top, I will work a little bit with the the highlight color. 
And because you're you're working with a wet palette, it helps keep your your paints a bit keeps them wet for longer. Um, so so you can keep going back and and using those same colors. Yeah, that's really one of the biggest advantages of the wet palette that you have them just available whenever you need them. And again, it's not that you have to have a wet palette, but it is quite useful. Just make sure you uh, you clean it quite regularly, because I've seen some funky ones out there that, that <coughs> they start to grow their own paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you uh, tend to do brush licking, it's really important to actually change things every day. Mm. But it's not only able to, to tell subtle differences and shades and nuances on paint, but uh, but yesterday at, at his place he was able to, to tell by the taste of the paint of Matt's wet palette that he, he was like, yeah, you, you need to change this. <laughs> Psst, that's it's, it's, it's starting to whisper to me. <laughs> it speaks in tongues. Do you think that skull could need some glowing eyes? Or do you think I, maybe it's too much? I mean, I think you know what I'm going to say, but it's whether you, you have the time to do it. I mean, I, I think I think um, it might be a cool effect that, that people out there might be interested in yeah. seeing. Right. Uh, whether, whether or not it's, yeah, it's yeah. like perfect for the miniature, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't think my eye is trained enough. I think that's something that you have to answer. But I do think that, that it's something that could be a really cool effect, something to add. Especially like like with a uh, set like this, which is designed for for gaming with, mm -hmm. it'd be you know just have like that cool cool little glow. Yeah, sure. All right, so uh, yeah, let's just add um, a little bit of the uh, the green to the palette. Ah, oh, awesome. And what uh, what what green are you using? Uh, we're using this graphic green from Game Color. You can see I've loaded that here on the back of the palette. And I will just try to to hit the inner side of the eye with the uh, with the pure with pure color. And again, I think uh, would would you say it's fair to say with this, it's just really just take your time and just be 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 very careful with it because you you don't want to have painted that beautiful skull and then you just yeah you know, splat <laughs> like that so, green on it yeah or use the airbrush to yeah, have a right. like, <laughs> small highlight. See, and already just, I mean, even just adding that tiny one bit of color, that adds that extra extra uh, level to it. And the nice thing is, you know, where well, I first painted the white highlights or the bone colored highlights here, and it's overlapping with the green that already looks like it's glowing a tiny bit. Sure. Because we have that brighter green on top. So just make sure that first layer is dry. Because one, actually the most important thing that you have to keep in mind when you want to paint little uh, so, uh, source light uh, one thing you have to keep in mind when you want to paint little source lights like that is that you just the actual object that uh, produces the light need to be the lightest so we need to paint like a highlight in the eye that is brighter actually than the surrounding area because okay. the light that is reflected cannot be as this in the same uh, strength sure. That's so good, yeah, that really makes sense. Actually, that's good. good yeah, too. a lot of people just make the mistake that they paint actually the light source, like a light bulb or a lantern, right. uh, not as bright as the reflected light, and that will always look artificial. Right. So here we will um, just mix a lighter color here on the palette. The thing is that uh, that area is just too small to actually try to do a wet blending or a lot of brush in there. Um, we will take the the light color just on the on the tip of the brush and just paint a little dot in the in the middle and the, these are actually very similar colors to the the flames you were showing me yesterday mm -hmm. right and the pictures of that will be going up on Slack very, very soon. So you can see that already makes quite a big difference uh, in, the, in the appearance. And the next thing is a very small white highlight in there. And 
went here a bit overboard on the side with the with the white. So that's, uh, that's two mistakes in one day, there, dude. Are you are you feeling all right? So uh, the the camera cut there because because Ben actually had a bit of a bit of a rage that uh, that I suggested he'd made two mistakes. So uh, now that he's <laughs> calmed down and and we've, we've yeah we've tranquil tranquilized me with. <laughs> I just sit here, here a little to the side because it's quite tricky to reach if you want to just add a highlight there without touching the side. Sometimes it's just a little bit right. hard to reach. Mm, so I think that already looks quite interesting. But that real glowing effect to the side, we need to still get that. And we will do that with the thin glaze of the, uh, of the second highlight color that we've used. So not the, not the pure white, but the little bit brighter mix right because because at this stage it kind of looks like it's actually got eyes eyeballs still in there kind of thing yeah um, i actually want to have it like glowing from from the middle like if there would be like smaller eyes in there so that, that effect is quite okay but i just need to get some like turquoise up here and maybe soft things out a little here on the side the important thing is that the uh, the light would actually really hit the, the sides here of the nose and also the the upper areas here and just just uh, to, to draw attention to again it comes back that you really don't have much brush on uh, much brush much paint on that brush yeah if, if you had it like slam full of paint you wouldn't be able to get that delicate uh, delicate glow effect right yeah and again uh, rather to do it two times than two times thinner than one time too thick A little bit more white. Also a bit thicker um, to actually get these lights here on the side of the nose. And also here on the, the lower side of the, the cheekbone. It's those final little strokes that just really like, just it makes it pop. Yeah, that's so cool, man. I think whoever suggested to have the glowing eyes, that guy's a freaking genius. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> the best part of the model there, mate. <laughs> definitely the best. So yeah, just a tiny little little effect, but I think it works really well with the the that haunted look of the the metal part here. So um, I think. I just want to want to refine the the upper highlight here, or the actually not the highlight but the definition here to the side. So I will just use some dark color to it's a black Japanese uniform mix to really get a nice separation. Dude, that's that's really cool. It's something that I've because I've tried to do that effect before, mm -hmm. and I've seen it, and I thought there's a much more complicated process than it actually is. It's it's one of these things that look like oh wow, look at that little OSL, but it's it's a very very simple thing actually right. to do, and it's nice to just have these little touches of color somewhere, especially when you paint it like a very dark and grim model. Sometimes it's just a bit too much because it's just a bit depressing. Sure. So these little colorful lights just also help to, to make the model look a lot more uh, yeah, fascinating. And of course, the way the way that he's posed, um, he, he could possibly be leaning his head to the right to actually ask his little companion a question. He's on his shoulder. <laughs> What do, what do you think, Bonesy? <laughs> the the I, whispering I, skull. Should, should I cut his leg off or should I cut his arm off? <laughs> All right, so uh, again, now you get an idea how we uh, would tackle uh, possessed metal. So um, I think at the, uh, the end of the chapter, it would be really nice to, to thank you guys out there for the amazing support and the amazing feedback we got uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, thanks so much for the support. And you really make uh, this year possible and you really make that, actually that paint job happening. So thanks a lot for that. And uh, yeah, we...
hope to continue as long as we can stand on this ground. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Awesome.